It's time now for Mr. Keen, Tracer of Lost Persons. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Anison and Kalinos present Mr. Keen, Tracer of Lost Persons. One of the most famous characters of American fiction in one of radio's most thrilling dramas. Tonight and every Thursday at the same time, the famous old investigator takes from his file and brings to us one of his most celebrated missing persons cases. Tonight's case is entitled The Case of Murder and the Missing Car. This program comes to you from the makers of Anison, the remarkable method for getting incredibly fast, effective relief from pains due to a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. All of you know Anison, I'm sure. For chances are, there are many people listening to me now who have been given Anison tablets either by a dentist or a physician at some time or other. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, it contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Next time you suffer the sudden pain of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, don't wait for relief. Try Anison. You'll be delighted with its incredibly fast, effective action. Use only as directed. If pain persists or is unusually severe, see your doctor. Ask for Anison, spelled A-N-A-C-I-N, at your drug counter today. <laughs> Now for Mr. Keene and the case of murder and the missing car. Our scene opens on a lonely road just outside the city limits. A young man is at the wheel of a large blue sedan, while right behind him another passenger in the car holds a loaded revolver against the back of the driver's head. The terrified young man is saying, You'll never get away with this. If you kill me, the police will catch up with you. Put that gun down, I warn you. Put it... A car. It's stopping. It must have run out of gas. Look, I'll make a bargain with you. Spare my life and I'll... No. No, don't shoot. No! Mr. Keene's office. Is this Mr. Keene? No, this is his partner, Mike Clancy. Please put Mr. Keene on the telephone. Well, uh, who's calling? My name is Thomas Fielding. It's a matter of life and death. Well, just a second, Mr. Fielding. There's a fellow on the phone, boss, who sounds like he's going to explode. He wants to talk to you. Oh, well, let me have it, Mike. Hello? Mr. Keene? Yes. This is Thomas Fielding, number 43 Staunton Road. Can you come out here immediately? What's the trouble, Mr. Fielding? I... I can't tell you over the phone. All I can say is that I've uncovered a murder. Have you notified the police? Not yet. I must speak to you first. Please, Mr. Keene, hurry. I don't think I can stand this strain much longer. Number 43 Staunton Road, you say? Yes. When you get here, don't go into the house. Come around to the garage in the back. You'll find me there waiting for you. I'll be right over, Mr. Fielding, with my partner, Mike Clancy. Thank you, Mr. Keene. Let's get out there, Mike. Staunton Road. This man, Fielding, says he has discovered a murder. Well, here's the house, Mr. Keene. Number 43. Mr. Fielding asks us to come around to the garage in the back, Mike. It must be this way. Sure, and it's a pretty fancy place, boss. Looks as though Mr. Fielding's a well-to-do man. There's the garage. And that must be Mr. Fielding standing near the door. Mr. Keene? Yes. I'm Thomas Fielding. This is my partner, Mike Clancy. Before we go inside the garage and I show you what I want to show you, I ask you to promise me one thing. What is it? That you won't call the police until you've heard my story. Very well, Mr. Fielding. Come with me. This is my car, Mr. Keene. I want you to look in the trunk in the rear. Now... Open the trunk lid. I'll handle it, boss. 
Chance preserver. There's a body inside. He, he's dead. I examined him myself. Do you know who this man is, Mr. Fielding? Yes. His name is Bob Richards. He was engaged to my daughter, Anne. He's got a bullet wound in the back of his head, Mr. Keene. Yes, yeah, so I noticed, Mike. Mr. Fielding, what do you know about the murder? Let's step over here, Mr. Keene, away from the body. I, I can't bear to look at him anymore. I'll tell you everything. Well, Mr. Fielding? Yesterday afternoon, my car disappeared from the garage. It's a new car, as you can see. And I thought it had been stolen. Did you report it to the police? Yes. Several hours later, my daughter Anne came home and told me she had taken the car without permission. But she came home without it. What had happened to the car? I don't know, Mr. Keene. My daughter Anne refused to tell me. She just said the car would be returned in the morning. We had a quarrel about it, and she went up to her room. I haven't spoken to her since. And how was the car returned here to your garage, Mr. Fielding? The police called back right after I spoke to Anne and told me they had located my car in a lonely road just outside the city limits. They brought it back here about midnight and then left. They didn't have any idea of what was in the trunk? No, Mr. Clancy. There was no reason to search the trunk as the car appeared to be all right. Mm. Police theory must have been the car thief lost courage and abandoned the car. Exactly, Mr. Keene. Well, this morning I came into the garage and noticed there was a slow leak in one of the tires. When I looked for the spare tire inside the trunk, I I found the dead body of Bob, Bob Richards. Did you question your daughter, Mr. Fielding? Not yet, Mr. Keene. I phoned you immediately. Well, Mr. Fielding, I suppose you realize that your daughter is in a difficult position. That's why I called you, Mr. Keene, before notifying the police. Anne could never have committed a crime like that. Besides, she loved Bob Richards. She intended to marry him. Even though... Even though what, Mr. Fielding? I objected to him, strenuously. I didn't like him, Mr. Keene. I felt he wasn't worthy of my daughter. Why? He was a nobody, a bond salesman who was probably trying to marry into money. I... I'm rather wealthy. And when I die, my daughter Anne will inherit my entire estate. I see. I wanted Anne to marry someone who could make a prominent socially. I suppose that... Makes me a snob, Mr. Keene, but... Mr. Fielding, it also makes you one of the suspects in this case. What do you mean? You said yourself that you disliked Bob Richards. But I never... Father? Anne. What are you doing in the garage with these people? Oh, there's a man who wants to see you. He's in the house. He says it's very urgent. He can wait, whoever he is. Anne, uh, this is Mr. Keene, the famous investigator. And his partner, Mr. Clancy. Mr. Keene. Perhaps you better tell your daughter what's happened, Mr. Fielding. Tell me what? Anne, Bob Richards has been murdered. Murdered? Oh, no. Oh, it isn't possible. His body is in the trunk of our car. Oh, no. Oh, take it easy, young lady. <gasps> how, did, how did it happen? Your father found Bob Richards' body a little while ago, Anne. In spite of your feelings, I'm afraid I'll have to ask you a few questions. What is it you want to know, Mr. Keene? When you borrowed your father's car yesterday, what happened to it? I... I gave it to Bob. He asked to borrow it and said it was important. Why didn't you tell your father or ask his permission? Because I knew he would refuse. He didn't approve of Bob. Hmm. You're quite sure Bob Richards didn't say why he wanted the car, Anne? No, Mr. Keeney. He, he just told me he, he'd return it in the morning. Please, I, I want to go back to the house and be by myself for a while. Mike, go back with Anne and make a phone call to the police. Ask them to come here as fast as possible. Okay, Mr. Keene. Father, I... What is it, Anne? Nothing. i better go now. Mr. Keene... You've got to promise me that you'll do everything you can to clear my daughter. She had nothing to do with that murder. I can only promise you this much, Mr. Fielding. I'll do everything I can to find out who murdered that unfortunate young man, Bob Richards. When I find the killer, he or she will face a judge and jury. No matter who may be hurt in the process. <laughs> Can you show me where the phone is, young lady? The telephone is in the drawing room to your left, Mr. Clancy. 
Please excuse me. Oh, uh, pardon me. You're not Mr. Fielding, are you? No, my name is Clancy. Oh, you must be the fellow his daughter Anne said was waiting here for him. Yes, I'm George Armstrong. Did you say your name was Clancy? Mike Clancy. Are you the man who's associated with Mr. Keene, the famous investigator? That's right. I'm just about to make a phone call to the police. The police? What's happened? A young fellow's been murdered. Murdered? What's his name? Bob Richards. Great Scott. Do you know him, Mr. Armstrong? No, but my wife did. That's why I came here this morning. I... Oh. Here's Mr. Keene and Mr. Fielding now. I, I'll go in and speak to them. Tell Mr. Keene about your wife, Norman Richards. I'd better put in that police call. Mr. Keene. Yes, I'm Mr. Keene. And you must be Mr. Fielding. Who are you, sir? My name's George Armstrong. I, I came here to inquire about my wife, Elizabeth. I don't know your wife. And I don't know you. I realize that. It's just that my wife didn't return home last night. She had a business appointment with a young man named Bob Richards. Mr. Keene, your partner just told me that young Richards has been murdered. Yes. Your wife knew him, Mr. Armstrong? Just in a business way. She mentioned once that he was engaged to Mr. Fielding's daughter. I haven't slept all night, Mr. Keene, or even changed my clothes. I, I've been too worried. But why did you come here? Because, Mr. Fielding, I hoped your daughter Anne might be able to tell me where to locate Richards before I asked the police to look for my wife. Now, I, I don't know what to think. How was he murdered? Bob Richards' body was found in an automobile, Mr. Armstrong. He was shot. But your story introduces a new aspect into this case. Now, if we could locate your wife, she might be able to give us some information. Perhaps Elizabeth's come home by this time, Mr. Keene. I'm going back. I, I've got to do something. I'll not... go with you. I'd like to find that out more about her disappearance. Well, Mr. Keene. Yes, Mike. Uh, Lieutenant Hale of the Homicide Squad will be over here in ten minutes. All right, Mike. You stay here and wait for him. Meanwhile, I'll accompany Mr. Armstrong to his house. I have a feeling that his wife will be an important link in this puzzling chain of events. Come in, Mr. Keene. Well, thank you, Mr. Armstrong. I think we'd better go into the... Mr. Armstrong, is that your wife's hat and bag on the table? Why, yes. Elizabeth must have returned. Elizabeth! It's George. Where are you? Oh, Elizabeth. I've been terribly worried about you. Where have you been? You... Mr. Armstrong, just a moment. What do you want? What's wrong with you, Elizabeth? Wrong? Why, nothing. <laughs> Do I look as if something's wrong? Elizabeth, for heaven's Let sake. Let me question your wife, Mr. Armstrong. Who are you? My name is Keene. Your husband told me you disappeared last night. Where were you, Mrs. Armstrong? Well, I, I was here. Elizabeth, you know you weren't home. Wasn't I? Try to remember, Mrs. Armstrong. Where were you last night? I... I don't know, Mr. Keene. I, I really don't know. Elizabeth, Bob Richards has been murdered. Bob? Murdered? Bob? What, she's oh. speaking, Mr. Keene. I have her. Elizabeth. Elizabeth, are you all right? I think she'll be all right, Mr. Armstrong. When she's able to talk, she's going to tell me everything she knows about Bob Richards' murder. In just a moment, we'll return to Mr. Keene and the case of murder and the missing car. Meanwhile, stop tooth decay and unpleasing breath. Yes, yeah, stop tooth decay and unpleasing breath that breathes between the teeth. Use Colonos toothpaste with dental floss action. Your dentist will tell you, brush your teeth after meals to stop decay. Clean those cracks and crevices deep between your teeth to guard against unpleasing breath. Now Colonos gives you dental floss action. That is, sends thousands of active cleansing bubbles to help dislodge bits of food that can cause unpleasing breath. 
What's more, foamy, refreshing Kalinos brightens teeth by removing ordinary yellow surface stains. Helps stop tooth decay. Get Kalinos toothpaste with dental floss action today. Now back to Mr. Keene and the case of murder and the missing car. Mr. Keene, the great investigator, and his partner, Mike Clancy, are investigating the murder of Bob Richards, a young bond salesman whose body was found in the trunk of an automobile belonging to wealthy Thomas Fielding. Among the suspects are Fielding's daughter, Anne, and a woman named Elizabeth Armstrong, who may have been with the victim just before the killing. Now in the Armstrong home, George Armstrong, Elizabeth's husband, discusses the many strange aspects of the case with Mr. Keene. My wife has fallen asleep, Mr. Keene. I, I'd rather you wouldn't awaken her for a while. She appears to me to be ill. Mr. Armstrong, it's imperative that she explain where she was last night when Bob Richards was murdered. Now, you say she had a business appointment with him? Mr. Keene, perhaps you're being a bit unfair to my wife. Am I? Why? Thomas Fielding's daughter, Anne, was engaged to Richards. She ought to know a lot more about this thing than my wife, Elizabeth, does. You said his body was found in Anne's car, didn't you? In her father's car. She claims she borrowed the car to lend to Richards. Well, frankly, I don't know very much about... Oh, excuse me, Mr. Keene. Hello? Is Mr. Keene there? This is his partner, Mike Clancy. Oh, just a second, Mr. Clancy. Mr. Keene, it's your partner. Oh, thank you. Mike? Sure, and I'm glad I was able to reach you, boss. You don't know what's been going on here at the Fielding House since you left with Mr. Armstrong. What happened? Well, right after you left... I went into the garage to make a careful search of the car before the police arrived. Five minutes later, I looked out through the garage window and saw Fielding and his daughter Anne sneaking out of the house. Did you follow them, Mike? I'd say I did. I caught up with them at the airport, just as they were about to take a plane for Mexico City. I've got them outside in the waiting room now, guarded by an airport cop. Good work, Mike. Let's see. The police must be at Fielding's house by now. Sure, and I guess they are. But there's one thing more, Mr. Keene. In spite of Fielding and his daughter trying to get away, there's another suspect who's due for some questioning. What do you mean, Mike? I found a letter in the glove compartment in Fielding's car, and it's mighty interesting. All right, Mike. Take Mr. Fielding and his daughter Anne to our office. We'll call the police from there after I've seen that letter. Right, boss. We'll be at the office inside uh, 20 minutes. Well, Mr. Armstrong, I'm going to make you responsible for your wife Elizabeth. She must not be permitted to leave this house. Mr. Keene, I'll still swear to her innocence. She didn't murder Bob Richards. Innocence or guilt depends on evidence, Mr. Armstrong, and nothing else. And perhaps I'll have that evidence very shortly. Mr. Keene. Oh, hello, Mike. Here's Mr. Fielding, boss, and his daughter, Anne. I brought them here to our office, like you said. Mr. Fielding, I understand you just tried to leave the country with your daughter. I have nothing to say, Mr. Keene. You asked me to investigate this murder case and help your daughter, Anne. And then you deliberately make things more difficult for yourselves. Don't you see what you've done? Father, I'm not going to let you take the blame for me. Anne, be quiet. No, I'm going to tell Mr. Keene the truth. For your own sake, I suggest you do, Anne. Mr. Keene, father tried to get me out of the country when he suddenly believed that I actually did kill my fiancé, Bob Richards. And what made your father suspect you, Anne, after first believing in your innocence? I told father I was violently jealous of Bob. I knew he'd been seeing Elizabeth Armstrong, and I thought she was stealing him away from me. Go on, Anne. Bob swore that he was only seeing Elizabeth on business, Mr. Keene, trying to sell her some bonds. But I was never sure. In other words, Anne, your father thinks you could have murdered your fiancé because you were jealous of him? No, no, Mr. Keene. She couldn't have. I didn't, Father. I loved Bob. But I want Mr. Keene to know the truth no matter what happens. Now, Anne, you said Bob was trying to sell Elizabeth Armstrong some bonds? Yes, Mr. Keene. She has a great deal of money left to her by her family... If Bob had managed to sell her a lot of securities, his commission would have given us a chance to get married. I see. Is there anything else you want to tell me, Anne? Why, I think I've told you everything now, Mr. Keene. The entire truth. All right. Mike, 
Now let's see that letter you mentioned over the phone. Well, here it is, boss. You say you found this in the glove compartment of Mr. Fielding's car? Yes, sir. It's a note sent to Mrs. Elizabeth Armstrong by Bob Richards, arranging a meeting last night. The night he was murdered, eh? Hmm. He says here in the note that he'll pick her up in a blue sedan on a certain street near the city limits. And that it's very important. Mr. Keene... My car is a blue sedan. Yes, I remember, Mr. Fielding. Then my daughter Anne is in the clear. She took the car to lend it to Bob Richards. And he must have been murdered after he picked up Mrs. Armstrong. Mike. Yes, sir. When you found this note in the glove compartment of the car, was it covered with this oil? The whole glove compartment was covered with oil, boss. Just look at my coat sleeve. I got myself smeared when I reached inside. And I noticed that there was a small oil can tipped over. Yes, Mr. Keene. There was a can of oil in the glove compartment. But what's that got to do with the letter and Bob Richards' murder? Everything, perhaps. Mr. Fielding, will you give me your word of honor that you and your daughter, Anne, won't try to leave this office until I've contacted you again? If you fail me once more, your daughter may not have a chance to clear herself of murder. You can trust me this time, Mr. Keene. Now that I've seen the letter, I feel that Anne can prove herself innocent. All right, Mike, let's go. And make certain you have your gun with you. We may need it within the hour. Mr. Keene. Hello, Mr. Armstrong. Come in. You remember my partner, Mike Lancy? Of course. Glad to see you. Mr. Armstrong, I have a letter here that was sent to your wife indicating that she was with Bob Richards at the time he was murdered. A, a letter? Yes. Then, then it's true. What is true, Mr. Armstrong? I, I couldn't believe it at first, Mr. Keene. But now I'm convinced. Half an hour ago, my wife Elizabeth became delirious. As I started to call for a doctor, she said something and... I realized she thought she was talking to Bob Richards. What did she say? She said... I love you, Bob, and I won't let Anne Fielding have you. I'd rather kill you first. And that practically amounts to a confession that your wife murdered Bob Richards. Mr. Keene, I, I never dreamed that Elizabeth and Richards were in love. May I see your wife, Mr. Armstrong? She's lying on the couch inside. Come with me. Elizabeth. Elizabeth, it's George. Talking to her won't bring her around, Mr. Armstrong. She's been drugged too deeply. Drugged? Yes. You mentioned a while ago that you didn't sleep last night worrying about your wife. And never even changed your clothes. What about it, Mr. Keene? Mike, look at his sleeve. Uh, here, what, what the devil are you doing? Saints preserve us, Mr. Keene. But he's got the same oil marks on his sleeve as I've got on mine. Yes, Mike. And he got them from the same place, the glove compartment of Mr. Fielding's car. That's a lie. Armstrong, you didn't sleep last night because you were busy murdering Bob Richards. I told you my wife confessed. She murdered Richards. If she has confessed, it's because she's under the influence of drugs and doesn't know what she's saying. How do you know that? One way to tell when a person is drugged is by the size of the pupils in their eyes. And I noticed your wife's the first time I saw her. You drugged her Armstrong so that you could confuse her. Make her forget what she did last night. When probably she was here all the time in this house. Do you think you can prove that, Keene? I intend to. The way I see it, you intercepted that note sent to your wife. And kept the appointment with Bob Richards yourself. Then you made him drive to a secluded spot and you shot him. After that, you put the note in the car's glove compartment as further evidence against your wife. But your sleeve was smeared with oil in the process. You're very smart, Keene. But not smart enough. Get your hands up, both of you. That gun won't help you, Armstrong. It only proves conclusively that I'm right. <laughs> sure you're right. But you and your partner here won't live to tell the story. Would you like to know why I killed Bob Richards? It wasn't jealousy. I'm convinced that your wife's relationship with Richards was innocent. Even if it hadn't been, do you think I'd have cared? <laughs> I only married Elizabeth for her money. She has half a million dollars, Keene. And I'd have had my hands on it already if Richards hadn't tried to interfere. So that was it. You were plotting to kill your wife for her money when Richards found out and tried to warn her. 
That's why he wanted to see her alone in the car. Exactly. Put the gun down, mister. I'm warning you. You're warning me, Clancy. <laughs> That's rich. Look out, boss. He means business. I'll say I mean business. George, no! Elizabeth! No! What are you doing with that gun? my arm, Elizabeth. Grab him, Mike. Are you okay, boss? The shot went harmlessly into the wall, Mike, when you hit him. But I think we owe our lives to Mrs. Armstrong. If she hadn't come in and grabbed his arm, we would have been finished. George, my husband... Mike Clancy knocked him out, Mrs. Armstrong, but he'll be all right. And I'll make sure he don't get frisky again with his handcuffs. I... I feel so strange. You'll be stronger after the effects of the drug wear off, Mrs. Armstrong. Drug? Yes. Your husband drugged you. Then tried to have you arrested for the murder of Bob Richards. Oh, I... I can't believe it. Now I see that maybe my brother was right. Before he died, he warned me. He said George only wanted to marry me for my money. He not only wanted your money, Mrs. Armstrong, but also your life. Uh, uh. He's coming around, Mr. King. Get him on his feet, Mike. All right, now. Let, you go. Let, let me alone. It's no use to resist any further, Armstrong. Within an hour, you'll be indicted for murder in the first degree. And you'll start on the road that will lead to payment for your crime in full. <laughs> And so Mr. Keene finds the solution to the case of murder and the missing car. The next time you're suffering from the pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, try Anison. You'll bless the day you heard of this incredibly fast way to relieve these pains. Now, the reason Anison is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven, active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician. And in this way have discovered the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pain of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So next time such pain strike, take Anison. For most effective relief, use only as directed. Your druggist has Anison in handy boxes of 12 and 30, and economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. The name is Anison, A N A Z I N. Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, is based on the novel Mr. Keene. The radio sequel is originated and produced by Frank and Ann Hummert. Dialogue by Lawrence Clee. Directed by Richard Leonard. Bennett Kilpack plays Mr. Keene. It is on the air every Thursday at this time. Don't miss Mr. Keene next Thursday when the kindly old Tracer turns to the case of the missing Countess. Ever suffer heartburn or upset stomach from acid indigestion? Safe new Bicidol mints, medically proven, quickly rid stomach of that blown-up feeling. Give longer-lasting relief than baking soda. Yes, hours of relief. Bicidol mints not only neutralize, but actually carry away excess stomach acids. Soothe irritated stomach lining. Let you sleep all night long when acid indigestion strikes. Carry new Bicidol mints for fast relief. Anywhere, anytime. <laughs> Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, will be on the air next Thursday at the same time. This is Larry Elliott saying goodbye for Mr. Keene and the Whitehall Pharmacal Company, makers of Anison and Colonos, and many other dependable, high-quality drug products. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.